From the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina, I'm Ken Squire, and welcome to the ninth. During this season, when the engines are silent, tracks pretty much snowed under, we reflect. We ponder the purpose of our sport, what its gifts are, what it teaches us. There is Victory Lane. Ken Squire is down there. Victory Lane, and it is a harmonious group around Bobby Isaac. Delighted to see him here, fourth time in a row, Bobby. Congratulations on a great run. Well, thank you, Ken, and my car did work real good. He not only made us recognize the drivers, but care about them as people, respect them as athletes, and realize that they were heroes. In our sport, there are innovators, builders, advocates, challengers, heroes, and an announcer now and then, all have a part to play. From a windy Daytona Speedway, I'm Ken Squire, and welcome to America's Great Race. The cars that we park in our dooryards, that we drive to work and play today, take on epic proportion for a purse of nearly $800,000. The drivers of legendary status, men brave enough to take life in their bare hands and deal with it at 200 miles per hour. America wanted heroes, real heroes they could believe in. Why would you want to do something that you know darn well could turn around and bite you, could kill you? I had never wanted to do anything else. And Dale Earnhardt is coming out of his car. Never, never doubt that cliche about Dale Earnhardt, one tough customer. Let me tell you about my beginning. Morrisville, Vermont. C.C. Miller's pasture where uh, old CC had built his own super speedway, and I was the announcer. There were race cars, weekends, daring drivers, dancing with death and danger in every corner, bobtail streamliners, boy, they take your breath away. I was fully involved. It was a book of marvels for a kid. When future historians write about the wonders of the world, save at least one chapter for this. The world's fastest motor speedway, the Alabama International Motor Speedway, here at Talladega, Alabama. Grant Sr. became my big mentor. The motor Racing Network, which Roger Bear and I were favored to get started. Yeah, Bill said he'd give us a place to work. He did. It was a Pepsi-Cola cooler, and we had two telephones on top out in the hall. And Bill would show up every hour or so and say, How are you boys coming? Have we got a lot of stations? Yes, sir. And that was the beginning of MRN. And now, from high above the start finish line at Ontario, here is Ken Squire. And a good, good day around the world. Welcome to the fourth run into the California 500. Today, for a first. His idea was to introduce America to those heroes in a bold way by broadcasting NASCAR's biggest race, the Daytona 500, live from start to finish. Ken Squire had the vision that this would work. He also, frankly, very important, he had Bill France's ear. Two of the greatest fiddling here, fidgeting with first place, passing some of the strikes in the last lap, trying to take it home. It's all come down to this. Out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. There's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. And he's got this legal pad, and it's all it's full. The legal pad was filled with phrases to describe yeah. stock car racing. Put your teeth in your pocketbook, Grandma. This is going to be a rough one. And they begin to shuffle down the back straightaway. It is a two-car joust. And now, 
moves in to appropriate the lead. Into turn three, he fireballs his way into the lead. Goes out in front by one, two, three car lengths. And look at that Oklahoma land rush back there. Because the gauges begin to roll around and get red and rosy out there. Johnny Utzman hand grenades the engine. It detonates right at the start-finish line. Like bullets, they propel themselves out of the corner. He looked at me and he said, there is no substitute for homework. It was Gene Shepard who wrote, if horse racing was the sport of kings, then auto racing was the sport of friends. Hey, kid. Again. Just once. Just once. I wish you guys would tell us the real story. Shit. Bobby Allison high. Davy Allison trying the inside move. Bobby Allison holds him off. They come to the strike. And the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison, Davey Allison, his son in second, Judy Allison is static. What a tremendous family performance. Kowicki there. Elliott pulls a little ahead on the outside, driving for the finish. Here comes Kowicki up on the bottom of the racetrack. Kowicki going for all of it. They touch, and across the line, it's Elliott. Bill Elliott has done it. Davy Allison first. Morgan Shepard gets it all back there. Has he got anything left? Coming to the strike. Morgan comes to the inside, and Davy Allison is going to win the Daytona 500. In 1965, when this snowbird first flew south to Daytona, Bill France Sr. told us, told me, come the year 2000, this sport will be major league, right up there with baseball and football. France Sr. sure hit it right on the nose. For everyone here at CBS who for 22 years have brought you this American racing classic, brought it into your homes with a sense of dignity and dedication, love and respect, thank you for being part of it. And I hope that you'll take that message along that this sport is so special, so unique, and so beautiful in so many ways.